Come on, baby, you can do it. Woo! Yeah, I'm telling you, there is power in prayer. <laughs> Man! Well, five minutes. That one only took five minutes of constant trying and seeing what we could do to make this go. Hello, hello, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me okay. I hope today finds you well and full of faith. Amen. <laughs> Let me see here. This thing is not turned around properly. Got all kind of weird things going on. Uh, maybe. I don't know. It's... Oh, well. I'm praying it'll rotate your device. You can't turn your phone while live, I know, but it's turned the wrong way. Let's go. Let's see if that'll, uh, that'll help. Maybe it will, maybe not. Anybody there? Anybody hear me okay? <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing like a little, little technical difficulties. My apologies to everybody watching. We're going to try to work it out here. I guess it's because I started it straight up and down. It won't turn the other way. Praise the Lord. Anyway, we're going to get this worked out. Name of Jesus. Get back, devil. Get back, devil. Name of Jesus. All right. Hey, good to see you, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. And like I said before, I hope today is finding you well and full of faith in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Although it is me, our faith gets tested every day. We're going to have to just stretch it out. Just like working out, lifting some spiritual spiritual weights. Come on. Come on. We can do it. We have, a, we have our own kind of workout going on here. <laughs> Man, oh, I need some new equipment. Or something. Anyway, that was fun, challenging. I was like, oh, my fans, my fans, I've got to get to them, Lord. I've got to get to them. We got to, we got to get them out here because they want to hear about you. We want to talk about you, Father. And then all of a sudden, boom, the door opened and it said, live. You are now live at five. Hopefully it will uh, boot up later where I'll be able to share it again. And if not, hey, you guys might better go ahead and like and share because I don't, it may not, I might not be able to save it after this one. Um, but thank you for coming and joining me today. And today has brought us to John chapter 18. It is an incredible chapter and incredibly sad. This is when uh, all of the breakdown of the time of Jesus' ministry begins. And Judas ultimately betrays the Lord. But hey, uh, before we go much further, I just want to say happy birthday to whoever has a birthday today. The Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you again for showing up. All right. Now we're at John chapter 18. It says, when Jesus had spoken these words, and all of these words, and he prayed for his disciples as we saw yesterday. When he had spoken these words, hello, everybody. Thank you for just joining us. Hi, Mom. Hi, Joanne. Uh, it's good to see everybody. We're, we're talking all the way from, no wonder it takes a while to put all this together. I'm going to break for a second. We got people in Florida, uh, all the way to Peru, um, in the kitchen. Maria's in there kind of helping keep tabs on anybody. If anybody needs prayer, throw it out there, and we will. Um, she'll also come in here running saying something ain't working. If it ain't working or if it's, if we're together, that works out pretty good. I like that. Um, but in, so far, so good. She hadn't come in here. And then also, uh, where was it? We we're talking all the way to Texas, California. We got in Peru. And then I got a letter from Afghanistan yesterday. And that was seemed kind of incredible. Uh, don't know what to think about that really um, but we're going we're just going to keep loving love as much as we can no matter who it is or how it is or where it is amen <laughs> so whatever you guys are doing is it's something good and you all you're sharing and praying and and everything else here you know this is this is kind of kind of cool to know it's going that far and so no wonder it takes so long to boot up we got to channel all of these phones and and computers all the way across the world there come on all right. Okay, back to John chapter 18. Thank you for letting me have that little spat just for a second. I just need to do that. Sometimes it get a little weird. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook of Kidron. Now, 
before we go much further, I got there's a little something right there. You know that something amazing is about to happen when a brook is involved. When was the last time that there was a brook involved? Do you remember? Something about five stones come out of that and David and a big old giant. And, you know, <laughs> here the, the living stone, the rock of Gibraltar. The one that the firm and, and the cornerstone, the precious cornerstone, walking across the book, brook of Kidron, where there was a garden in which he entered with his disciples. Now Judas also was betraying him. Ah, boy. But you know, that had to be done. He knew the place where Jesus liked to hang out. For Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So that's, that was a cool little hangout right there. I bet it was just beautiful and peaceful and just awesome. Judas then, having received the Roman cohort and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. So Jesus, knowing all the things that were coming upon him, went forth and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said to them, I am he. And Judas also, who was betraying him, was standing with them. And we see in another gospel, he betrayed him with a kiss. So when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. You know that one little verse right there? I, I just want to make this point for a second. Now, verse 6, 18.6. They drew back and fell to the ground. Eight words, and they develop a whole doctrine out of that. That's where that comes kind of laying on hands and people fall out and all that kind of thing. But just kind of bring up to you, to your thought processes, what are the fruits of the Spirit? Self-control is one of the big ones there. But they fell back. Now, here's a side note here that's, that I find pretty interesting. Fell to the ground. Check this out on this commentary. They came to arrest a meek peasant and instead were met in the dim light by a majestic person. Not more, he was more than majestic. He was God in the flesh. Amen. That's interesting. They came to arrest a meek peasant but found deity and fell back to the ground. Interesting. Therefore, he again asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus, Jesus, the Nazarene. And Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these go their way. And he was talking point not to all of his disciples. Let all of these go their way. To fulfill the word which he spoke of those whom you have given me, I lost not one. Simon Peter then, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. And the slave's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put the sword into your sheath. The cup which the father has given you or has given me, shall I not drink it? Now, can you imagine that? That, that guy would have went to jail immediately if he stood up and went to go fight somebody, you know, and I suppose it was to today's modern situation. But the Lord even took control of that for a moment and shut everything down, and they still only managed to take Jesus out. So the Roman cohort and the commander of the officer of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him and led him to Annas first, for he was father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Now Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was expedient for one man to die on behalf of the people. Simon Peter was following Jesus, and so was another disciple. Now that now he was trying to keep his word, that he'd stay with him, and he even stood up with great courage, oh Peter, and he, he said, I will defend you to the death. And he was ready to, he was fired up, not already ready for battle, right? And then he began to see everything happening to Jesus and, and thought again. Remember that second thought. The second thought often is from the enemy. The Simon Peter was following Jesus and so was another disciple. Now that 
that disciple was known to the high priest and entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter was standing at the door outside. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the doorkeeper and brought Peter in. Then the slave girl who kept the door said to Peter, Hey, you are not uh, also one of these men's disciples, are you? He said, oh, No, I'm not. Now the slaves and the officers were standing there, having made their charcoal fire, for it was cold, and they were warming themselves. And Peter was also with them, standing and warming himself. And the high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. And Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together, and I spoke nothing in secret. Why do you question me? Question those who have heard what I spoke to them. They know what I said. And when he had said this, one of the officers standing nearby struck Jesus, pow, saying, Is that the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him. He said, If I have spoken wrongly, testify of the wrong. But if rightly, why do you strike me? So Anna sent him bound and <clears throat> to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? And he denied it and said, I am not. You know, somebody made a side note one time. And I thought that was pretty, pretty neat insight right there where they wrote, had it not been cold, Peter probably wouldn't have come anywhere close to the fire, but because it was so cold, he came to warm himself and then thereby exposed who he was by the light of the fire. He would have kind of slipped through unawares, except for he was coming to warm himself by the fire. How often do we go to do things that and it is all about the flesh, right? It just points to the flesh situation because we're cold, because we're hungry, because we're poor, because we're, we're this or that or the other. We will try to do something and uh, to cause an effect, an effect change, which in one way or another is not necessarily bad. But sometimes when we're coming to do something and we need to um, refrain for safety's sake, or for the Lord's sake, or for the spiritual righteousness, things of that nature, we often come and to satisfy the flesh and then thereby expose ourselves or bring ourselves to a place that is in, inappropriate. Or bring us to the place that where we deny the Lord. And then he denied it and said, I am not. And one of the slaves of the high priest, being a relative of one, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did I not see you in a garden with him? Peter then denied it again, and immediately a rooster crowed. Oh, man, I bet that broke his heart. We know it did. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas into the praetorium, and it was early, and they themselves did not enter into the praetorium so that they would not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. And again, this is where the Passover had come, right? So now he's coming up to that time. This is why understanding the feasts are and the feast days and what they're all about and what they mean. That's why it is so important. It's so we can get the deeper meaning and the deeper understanding of all of it. Because during that time, the high priests were preparing themselves to receive the sacrifice. And that little, those little lambs were being carried in even through the night as people were trying to come and scurrying about everywhere. There were people from all over the country and all over the direct world at that time, you know, as far as people could travel, coming to, to uh, bring their sacrifice and receive forgiveness of their sins, believing, and trying to fulfill the way of the Passover feasts. And that Passover tells the story of Jesus to the letter. <laughs> so incredible how that's happening. And that would bind the lamb, and they would bring it along with them. And old Ray Bolt sings a song, uh, Behold the Lamb, I believe it is. That's a sad story there, but it, it's an awesome song. Awesome song. I, 
I encourage you guys to check that out. Watch the lamb, something like that. Therefore, Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered and said to him, If this man were not an evildoer, we will not have delivered him to you. So Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your own laws. The Jews said to him, Well, we were not permitted to put anybody to death. They already had it in their heart. They're going to kill him. They'd been conniving for a long time trying to figure out how they were going to get that done. To fulfill the word of Jesus, which he spoke, signifying by what kind of death he was about to die. That death on the cross. Therefore Pilate entered again into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Are you saying this on your own initiative? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, Am I not a Jew? I'm not a Jew. Am I? Are, uh, your own nation and chief priests delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. Remember this, <laughs> friends. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting, so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Therefore Pilate said to him, So you are a king? And Jesus answered, You say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? Here he had the very one of truth right there before him, if he would just waited for the answer. Oh, how incredible. And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. Now remember this, he was found innocent after he was tried. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you wish then that I release for you the king of the Jews? And so they cried out again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber and a murderer, it goes on to say in another place. And here, check this out. They, they have a little side note here I thought that was so incredible. It said, in Barabbas, a rebel and a murderer, the name is Aramaic and means son of Abba, the son of the father. In place of this man, the son of the father died. <laughs> How incredible is that right there? Is that just a little note that just says, I'm the one that has come to die in place of your sins, the son of the father. Wow, that's incredible to me. And then we'll go back there and, and look into uh, verse 36. This is pretty interesting. It said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this world. You know, we were having a conversation with a few of the guys last night. It was interesting how, you know, I was telling them about, hey, man, it's so cool to have somebody from Afghanistan saying hello and saying that they appreciated the video, you know. <laughs> and uh, his name was Habib, uh, Habib or something like that. And uh, don't know any of his his faith or, or what he believes, but, you, you know, you can only speculate one way or another, and which the conversation went that way. And I said, man, what do we do if it was, if it was, uh, Somebody of another faith. I said, we love them. We love them the same way we love anybody else. It doesn't matter what faith we are. It doesn't matter um, of what belief or what standard of life or or size or color or creed. He, he's, he died for the whole world. Amen. Of course, we knew that. But when it comes face to face, we still just speak the truth. You know, whether we want to hear, whether anybody wants to hear that truth or not. Um, I, and I found many that don't really want to hear that. But we got to share the truth anyway, the best we can. And for as much as in me is, and for as much as in you is, 
Let us share the gospel for it and to not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? It's that good news that Jesus has come to take our place for the wrath of God, right? For the wages of sin. And because he received the wrath of God upon himself, having no sin, then our debt has been paid and that wrath is satisfied. The Lord doesn't seek uh, any further payment for these things. So we know that we are debt free as long as we believe in him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Boy, there's an opportunity to shout, throw up a like or a heart or whatever. <laughs> and a woohoo. I wish they had a woohoo button. I know I'd say that one a lot when somebody's preaching. But uh, hey, it's been awesome to spend some time with you guys today. I really enjoy that. And I'm going to do this as much as I can. Uh, I'm going to talk to the guys here tomorrow, coming on Wednesday. And I'm going to take, of course, I'll be here, Lord willing, uh, do the live five with y'all. But then we have another outreach um, that the church is, is uh, actively doing. And beginning Wednesday, they have the uh, Celebrate Recovery Outreach. And that is recognized by the county and uh, by the state, I, mm -hmm. I guess, you know. And uh, so anybody that comes out to that service um, will get credit for uh, community service, I think, something like that. I, I might be saying that kind of wrong, but in some essence, it's, it's the same credit as getting something, attending a class like AA and or some other, you know, um, self-help classes so this is a pretty good deal so we want to keep that going and uh, that begins at seven o'clock and i may i'm going to talk to brandon and, and who's uh, running that class there and see if maybe we'll we could do something live or, or pre-recorded or or whatever um just pray about that and if not that's okay too i know we can get pretty shy getting on camera you know it, it took me some getting over too i'm still trying to get over i get the butterflies every time i hit that live button <laughs> Uh, boy, what do you do about that? Nothing you can do, just charge through it. Hope they just settle down. Well, anyway, uh, so that's what we got coming up for tomorrow. And no news to speak of today. I haven't heard any new news. As far as I know, everybody's recovering nicely that we've been praying for. And then uh, uh, I call him my brother, uh, Brother Kenny. Uh, we're praying for him and his family. Okay, and and they they know what's up, and and uh, Lord knows what's going on. So just extend them in your prayers. So you just say, Brother Kenny, God will know what everything is going on with that. And if you guys have any prayers or unspoken requests, I, I encourage you just throw it out there, or leave a message, or instant message me privately. That's fine. Or leave an email, or call, or anything you want to do. Send a snail mail letter. <laughs> That's always a lot of fun. And thank you for the love and hearts out there. We, we sure do appreciate it. And your likes and your comments. I, I love coming back through and, and checking all your comments later and uh, trying to answer them. Um, but other than that, that's it. Thanks for spending your time with me a little bit today. God bless you and be safe out there. And hey, remember, above all else, love each other and trust in Jesus. Amen.